Who are you? I am no one. Niggas always gonna be reaching for they hit. Smoke a nigga like a clip. They, they can never catch me slipping. Every time your girl around, she be watch the way I'm dripping. Dripping. Try your luck. The wrong tree. I got the strings. Yeah, I'm charging up. They can't keep up. Got them looking drained. Now they walking up. Trying to put the face to the name. I'm in flex mode with the best though. Duh, duh. That's a major key. That's a chest mode. mode, mode. I'm your favorite G. I think it's best. Yo, yo, yo. Stop with all the grilling. I'm on jet fuel. Take a note. Clear the runway. Now they cannot clip my wings. Yeah, they suck. They ain't homie. They ain't even on the scene. Play it smart. They don't know me. They just know what they see. What it costs to get flee. But this style ain't free. Just that swag. Just that splash. One wrong move. That's your ass. Do the dash. Keep a stash. Just in case they trying to flash. Never lie. We don't slack. Tell her I was running back. I don't brag. I'm relaxed. I'm not in all of that. Yeah. It's really just the fam and my dogs. I just gotta make a call. I ain't in all that chatting. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah, I put that on the squad. We've been not you going hard. We on deck. Please don't make them. Go try your luck. Test me in again. We let it rain. Please don't start us up. Got that black and white. They ain't game. It's the office. Please don't search us. We don't got a thing. Tell them park it up. Then that ass be poking out them jeans. Stuff is walking up. Hook the fireworks. I keep the flame. Hook you parking up. That's the wrong tree. I got the strings. Yeah, I'm charging up. They can't keep up. Got them looking. Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen. It is another edition of DDS Sports Talk. Thank you for joining us tonight. We are your hosts, Blake Melton, Bradley Newbay, and the man, Matthew Two-Tone Blue. Parker's joining us from the man cave. Parker, I love seeing those colors on you, buddy. I love seeing the hype video. Cold, baby. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. go. It's, dark mode. it's dark mode time, guys. Here Ooh, we go. Trick or treat. It will be a nightmare for one of these teams. Even dreams are nightmares. You're even nightmares mm. or dreams. I got that backwards, didn't I? But guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Go ahead. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button down below. Check us out on all our social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at DDS Sports Talk. And you can download all the audio versions of these podcasts on your favorite podcasting platform. Boys, you know, we don't have like a normal off topic here, but uh, really and truly, Tennessee has become the topic, right? Why not top three undefeated season going on here? I, blowing out expectations. I don't, I don't even think the craziest of all fans thought seven and zero beating Alabama. Really? Yeah, Parker. You know, me being the battered vol that I am, even me, even I am kind of getting to the point to where I'm like, I'm starting to believe. I'm, I'm starting to feel like, can, can, are these guys gonna get beat? Why shouldn't you believe? There's no reason to not believe in this team. I mean, they, they haven't let us down. They haven't let us down yet. Weeks before the season, I've been just waiting to retweet it. I tweeted out the easiest bet all year was the Vols over seven and a half wins. Yep. Uh, and and it's just uh, no one expected this, right? Unless you're just crazy and you predict them to go undefeated every year and you just happen to get lucky once. But uh, you should believe. Why shouldn't you believe? So you're only one win away from cashing in. Will it happen this week is my question at the expense of the Kentucky Wildcats. Well, that's a good question. I guess maybe we should just jump right in. We can. We'll go to our college pick six. (laughs) 
we have a matchup of the Kentucky Wildcats coming to Knoxville and the UT Vols. If you like the Vols, you have to lay about 12 points or so. Parker, as we already mentioned, the Vols are 7 and 0, their best start since 1998. <sighs> I don't think it gets any better than this, man. You're the atmosphere. Can it even be any better than the Alabama game this week? I think that each as this season goes, as crazy as it sounds, yes, I think it can get crazier. Uh, you want to know who, what a crazy environment's going to be? How many crazy Tennessee fans might show up after a victory this weekend uh, against Kentucky whenever they go to Athens? I mean, this is a fan base that's not just going crazy in their own stadium. They're taking over opposing stadiums. But and look, everybody knows this has the classic trap game, you know, stereotype all over it. So this is something that, that Tennessee's got to stay focused and they got to execute. I was literally going to say, I mean, even even right there in your statement, we talk, mentioned Georgia. Like this has got the massive overhead look spot just <laughs> written all over it. I mean, that's yep. just one of those main things you got to look forward to. I don't think we talked about this in, in text. Like, what do you do different – you know, so many different jerseys, so many different things. One of the reasons that I believe that they're doing that in this game, other than the hype, other than the sell stuff, other than recruiting, which I think is the real reason, it's focus, man. It is freaking focus. You don't need to do that against Georgia. I mean, I know it's an away game, but the game that you could slip up and lose because you almost lost last year, you got to keep focused because you can lose this game. Yeah, I agree. I feel like this is just building this game up to a super hype level. Trying to make every game the most important game, if you will. Well, and but and that's what this team has kind yeah. of been all about. Game it's, by it's game, game by game, week by week, Wait, brick every, by brick. The ne- oh, no, 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 no. The next, the next game is the most important game. That has been kind of the 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 whole uh, the ideology of the of the entire team this entire year. So I mean, it, Hendon Hooker has has he. You can always hear him at practice and before games. This is just another day at the office. Everybody focus, you know, it, having that leader in the huddle, I think ultimately is what's going to put them over the, over the edge in this game too. Parker, tell us about their wide receiver situation going into this game. Well, no one's re- quite hot on their team. I mean, well, yeah, Jalen Hyatt's got 12 touchdowns. He leads the country in everybody in touchdowns, all of them. We're he talking leads about the SEC. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, over, we're over some teams. <laughs> you're right. He does. And we're talking about Hendon Hooker for Heisman. Why not hide for Heisman, right? And Cedric Tillman might be making a return to this game. That's another big thing. It's rumored that that he probably does. I think that personally, just with just reading between the lines, I think we see him out there. I don't think we see him every play because this, this Tennessee game <laughs> team runs a different style of offense. I don't care how good of a shape you're in. You're not in the football shape that this cardio needs to be in uh, <laughs> to be out there every single play. But I, yeah. I think they want to get him in that shape before Georgia. I totally agree. I mean, I think he's, I, th- I think that's probably quite honestly why we haven't seen him to this point. Uh, the surgery that he had was, it's not a surgery you're typically not ready to play for. It's, I think it's, I think you're, you hit the nail on the head. It is more about being in game shape for this offense because Tennessee doesn't substitute receivers. So if you're in, you're in for the whole series. So um, I think if we see him, he'll probably be, he'll probably be on a snap count of some kind. Uh, maybe a series count is probably a better way to put it in, the, in this offense. Uh, either way, I mean, this is the best wide receiving core in the country. I don't think I don't think there's any question about it, and I'm not really worried about it. The, the interesting thing, I don't know a lot of people know this, but Tennessee is one of those teams that has the GPS real-time trackers under their, their pads. So, like, they can real-time see over there, you know, how far he's ran. Is he still running at his normal pace? And, like, hey, he's starting to slow down. Let's get him out. Something Something's wrong. Right. They've got analytics on top of analytics, I'm sure, uh, with all this stuff. But let's uh, – I mean – you want to just break it down head to head here? Well, what do we want to no, talk about? Here? I want to talk about the other team real quick. Okay, let's talk. So about there it. is another team in this game, the Kentucky Wildcats. They they've had injuries of their own. They they're coming off of a bye week. They're feeling a little bit better, both mentally and physically, heading into Knoxville. And I quote: "Will quarterback Will Levis? This 
is the healthiest I've felt in months. He's acting like he's a new man coming to Knoxville this week. Well, what it is is he's acting. He's just giving excuses of why he's played like absolute shit all year. I mean, he's just I, I, he's all we have heard all year and all in the off season is just how great Will Levis is and how he's just going to be, you know, third overall pick in the draft and all this other stuff. He mm. just he just doesn't put anything together, in my opinion, on the field. I, I'll tell you why he feels better than he's felt all year. It's because he's been on his back all year. Phil, oh. there's, there, there is 131 teams in college football. As far as sacks goes, Kentucky's rated 125th for how many sacks they've given up. This offensive line is absolutely terrible. We've learned Tennessee is one of the most blitz-happy teams in the country, and they're going to go after Levis because he ain't going to be feeling good after this game like he feels right now because they are going to put him on his back. Totally agree. He can have all the bananas and mayo that he wants. <laughs> <laughs> Old mayo boy. Well, I'll give you another fact before you want to give me your picks. Cause I know you two are on the fence. You don't know which way you're going to pick this game quite yet, but I've got uh, Stoops. Coach Stoops with UK has never beat a top five team. He is 0-6 in such games. Does that sway your pick? You're going to go away from Kentucky? Well, uh, no. So uh, Coach Stoops will be 0-7 after this weekend. Uh, I look at this this matchup, uh, and I'm not always one to look at things on paper, but even on paper, there's there's they don't match up well. You know, the big knock on Tennessee is, oh, well, you know, the, the, the defense, the secondary gives up a bunch of yards. Well, they don't give up that many points relative to how many yards they, they give up. You know, they only give up 23 points a game. So I, I'm not really not really worried about it because we're averaging 50 points a game. And we're also averaging video game-like numbers of 571 total yards. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. I mean, and if they think that they're just going to drop eight, guess what? We average over 200 yards rushing. I'm not worried about that either. E- either. Um, going into this, I think 12 is actually a pretty low line, but I understand why it's at 12 or 12 and a half, whatever it is. I think Tennessee, quite honestly, <laughs> I, could, I could eat my words here, and it could be a nightmare the other way. I think they run their ass all the way out of Nayland back into Kentucky. Jeez. I think they blow them out of the water. They make a statement game here. It wouldn't surprise me if this is a four touchdown, four touchdown uh, difference here in the score. Hey, wow. that would be nice. And But what to touch on what you said, Blake, about how kind of a bend but don't break defense, don't give up a lot of points, Tennessee actually is top 13 in the red zone in the nation. They've been faced – they've had 30 red zone attempts that they've had to defend. They've only given up 14 touchdowns. On the other side, we've been in the red zone 38 times and scored 37 of them, 31 of them being touchdowns. And – Looking at this matchup, I sound like a broken record over the last few weeks, but it's just how it is. These matchups don't make sense for the Vols, uh, for for teams to beat the Vols. Kentucky is 130th out of 131 in the countries that plays per minute. Tennessee is Tennessee is runs a full play per minute faster than Kentucky does. Like that's how different it is. It's so different. You could put 124 teams in that gap. I mean, it's just it's so different. Rod, they're going to want to run the ball with Rodriguez. Yep. Good, lu- good luck doing that because even after faith in Alabama, facing Alabama when it comes to efficiency against the run, Tennessee is seventh. I, I just It just doesn't make sense. Last year, they ran this game plan. They want to keep the ball out of the offense and they ran from the Vols, and they ran it to absolute perfection. I mean, absolute perfection. Last year, Tennessee had the ball for 13 minutes, and Mayo Boy had it for 45 minutes, and they still didn't win. There's no way that they do that, that they're able to run it to that degree again. I just think these teams are, are different than they were last year. Tennessee yeah. significantly better. Kentucky's worse, especially on the O-line, as I talked about. And people don't realize why Will Levis isn't as good other than the offensive line. It's Wandell Robinson. Wandell Robinson last year, he is the biggest percentage of offense lost to any team in college football. They lost 43% of their, their passing yards with one guy leaving last Yep. I just, it's a ton of points, but the matchup is dreadful. I will take the balls minus the 12 or whatever it is now. 
I'd be interested to see what the uh, the first half over under is. I kind of like that better than a four quarter game with UT and Kentucky. I wrote down in my final thoughts for this game, the official state motto of Kentucky is United. We stand United. We fall Kentucky (laughs) will fall, but (laughs) I'm going Kentucky covers in the last second touchdown, meaningless touchdown garbage time. I believe the balls will be up 40 to 24. Kentucky scores a touchdown and meaningless one and a half minutes to go. Kentucky loses 40 to 31, but give me the points. Yeah. Nothing would surprise. That wouldn't surprise (laughs) me either. My point is, is this is not, I don't think this is really going to be much of a game, but the Vols, I think if they continue to execute at the rate that they're executing and playing with the chip that they have on their shoulder, because look, every, every single one of them are playing with a chip on their shoulder this year. It seems like they got something to prove. Kentucky is our little brother. We need to send their ass back home. Uh, Bradley, the over under is thirty one for the first half. Uh, what's the what's the spread? The spread for the first half? is seven. UT minus seven. UT minus UT minus seven, and that, it's plus money. So like a ten dollars would. I think I like that better than the full game. Don't um, you? Yeah, because I, I can I, see UT going up pretty big in the first half, and then we've seen how it they kind of whether it slow it down intentionally or yeah. not, but yeah. it allows the, the team that's behind to climb back. I, I could see UT being up by easily 14. In the yeah, first it's just that I don't think Kentucky has that type of team. They don't have a Bryce young at quarterback. That's just going to start slinging the ball. They around. have a will Levis. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and they the balls D they is a, giving up 300 yards in four straight games. The yeah. way that they only give up 23. It doesn't mean anything. Really. <laughs> the, the way to beat this team is in the air. It is to air it out. But again, he's not going to have time. The offensive line is literally worse than freaking old Dominions. They're awful. They're terrible. Yeah. They're going to get the beer, beer barrel and just just win the game, be done with it. Um, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the beer barrel. We're going to – I don't even know what to call this game anymore. Is it the world's largest call outdoor it party? <laughs> Whatever. It's the world's biggest drinking party. You can't call it a cocktail party. Whatever. Whatever. Cock- <laughs> Call it whatever we want. Florida this is DDS. We don't play by their rules. The Florida, Georgia, in a <laughs> embarrassing line that I'm gonna have to read out uh, loud. Yeah, right I, I need to hear this. Let me make sure your mic's if, turned up. Here. If you want Georgia, you have to give Florida 22 points. 23 it's and a, a half. Actually, it's 23 and a half now. 23 and a half yeah. points. <laughs> that is so that is so embarrassing as the Florida Gator fan. Man. I wrote that my first words are the Gators are out. They're looking to play spoiler here in Jacksonville. My question to Blake is which Georgia team shows up? Is it the Georgia team that played against Kent State and almost lost to Missouri? Or is it the number one powerhouse team in the SEC in all of the land? I don't think it really matters. And I think it's this has more to do with Florida than it does about Georgia. I think Georgia is a very elite team still. Yeah, they've had their little missteps here and there. But I think – I still stand by this. Anthony Richardson is broken. He cannot function in this system. I don't know that Billy Napier is the answer at Florida. But whatever it is, I, I, I just – I still believe that that they do not have their shit together right now, and I don't think it's going to – there's no reason for it to all, all of a sudden come together against Georgia. I will tell you, Bradley, Florida's not that much higher in the power ratings against State. Um, you're gonna, <laughs> and, 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 and I was going to go ahead and forewarn you. Hey. This, this Florida breakdown and my Jacksonville j- breakdown is going to not be fun. They've played each other this these two guys, these two teams for 120 years. This is the biggest spread they've ever had in that time. The last time Florida beat a number one ranked team was in 2008. Uh, Vandy has lost their last 14 games in the SEC. Second worst on that list, the Gators. During that stretch, they are three and 11. To put that into perspective, in 12 years, Spurrier lost 14. 
and we mentioned it at the beginning of the year in the preview. This Florida team just isn't – they just don't have the talent. They just really don't have the talent, and that's not this recruiting – that's not this coaching staff's fault. I, that's what happens when you admit to not recruiting during the season. But this one over we here, had an, this one over here. We had it. an exclusive interview last yeah. year. You can go find it somewhere, I'm sure. Yeah. Twitter, Absolutely. DDS, Twitter, probably. Yeah. It, and to Blake's point, Anthony Richardson, you know, he has more interceptions than touchdowns. He's throwing for less than 57%. He wouldn't have a 1,000 yards passing if he didn't go up against this awful trash ball secondary. Let me put it this way, how bad he is. He has the same amount of touchdowns as he does tackles and fumbles. Mm, he does rank 11th in SEC quarterback rating. Not good enough for a Florida Gator squad. I mean, it's just so strange because, you know, last year everybody was saying, give me Anthony Richardson. Emory, don't, you know, Emory, Emory wasn't the, the answer. We want Anthony. Uh, I think it's a system thing. I think he was recruited in one system and now there's another system. And there's not enough talent around him to be able to make things happen because of the mass exodus that happened whenever the previous coaching administration. Do y'all want to talk Bennett or do you want to talk defense from Georgia? It don't matter to me. Georgia only allow allowing under 10 points per game in SEC play, only five plays of 40 or more yards. The Florida Gators have run the ball at a clip of about 60% of their offensive plays. I don't see that changing. I don't, I, don't, I don't automatically – I don't. there's no way that Richardson's going to sit in the pocket and no. throw 40 <laughs> times in this game. No, if he, if he does the score, they could double the spread if he sits and throws the ball 40 times. Oh. And they should run it. They run it 6.5 yards a clip. I mean, that's good, but, like, this offense is bad. Florida has 135 first downs on the season. That is two better than Vanderbilt. I, I just I, – I don't know what to – I don't know – where this team's going. I, I just, it's yeah. really, it's just not good. Yeah. ESPN's got uh, Georgia at a 92.8% chance to win. So you're saying there's a chance for the Gators. <laughs> exactly. hey, I hope, man. Do it. I will, I will, I will no, do the Gator chunk with look you. Look at this. God, did you? Okay. No. We're about to get there. Okay. Let's what? go ahead. You want to talk about this? What is it? Oh, the yards defense. allowed? Not defense. The yards that, allowed? And I bet half of that yards allowed by the Gators defense is on third down. Probably. Uh, they're one of the worst third down efficiency teams. 429 yards allowed per game. You know, it's funny. Look what the ground yardage is on that, too, because I, I didn't even write it down. It was so different. Literally, here's what my, set, my favorite says. As far as matchups, it's simple as this. The Gators can't stop the run. They're literally ranked outside the top 100, and Georgia is good at running. That's all I have. <laughs> and, and Georgia only allows 83 yards per game rushing. Yeah, it, it's, it's bad. And y'all are running 60% it's of your It's bad snaps. news. Here's the only thing that the Florida Gators may win this week. They may score more than the 9.1 points per game. <laughs> That Georgia is allowing. I'm going Georgia 38 to 13. Bulldogs cover. You know, it's a big, scary number. But honestly, I think Georgia's got in them. I'm going Georgia. Yeah, the only thing that scares me about this, Bradley, is your coach. It's obvious in, in that here and his previous stint, he knows the score. Just go watch that Tennessee game if you don't believe me. He tries to cut. He he, <laughs> he tries to cover. Score. He <laughs> tries to cover. I'm dead serious. He's a Lane Kiffin in that, all but right. I, I don't know even with him trying that he can. Give me Georgia. Nah, we're all on Georgia right there. We're going to the B1G. I mean, I don't know how sexy of a matchup this is. It's Ohio State at Penn State. If you want Ohio State, you're laying about 15 points. It seems like it is. Oh, oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Hype music. The, oh. This is, I wrote down that this is Penn State's Super Bowl. They will absolutely empty everything, including the kitchen sink here, Parker, against Ohio State. Uh, they absolutely will. The, the question is, will Sean Clifford get reversed to Space Jam and be able to execute those <laughs> things? And he does. Every now and then he shows up. I swear that guy's either Hendon Hooker or Petrus <laughs> from Iowa. Like there's no <laughs> or, or there's no in between. Penn State, by the way, used the whiteout last week against Minnesota because they knew it would be a waste in this game. Yeah, they, they absolutely do. I mean, look, 
Ohio State, they have a legitimate offense here for sure. They they're they're legit. They're an elite team. Penn State's just not on the same level. I mean, they're they're an all right team. They're what I would call maybe a maybe an Auburn in the oh, SEC. Geez. Maybe they're an Auburn. That's how we compare everybody here. We got a. <laughs> they're not quite a Missouri. They're not that low, that lowly, or a South Carolina. They're in the Kentucky Auburn range. Oh, Kentucky. That's kind of what I think. I mean, Ohio State. The facts are that they've been held under their scoring average. All eight years under against Coach James Franklin since he's been at Penn State. I'm taking the points. Ohio State 34 21, but give me Penn State to cover. Ohio State's won their last six on average 54 to 15. Uh, they've played nobody though. And Penn, yeah. State, <laughs> Penn State does have the best corners that they're going to see all year until they get to Michigan. I'm a little afraid of with as Ohio State's great, but Marvin Harrison Jr. doesn't get separation. Smith and Jigba is supposed to play. I don't know how many snaps. Penn State, though, has not faced anybody. Everybody they've faced offensively have been outside the top 70, except for one team, Michigan. And you all probably remember what happened in that oh, game. Oh, it was a beatdown. And, yeah, I, I just – I've got I've to lean. I, man, I'm, I'm right on the fence with you, Bradley. I don't know what to do on this one, but I'm going to lean. I'm leaning Ohio State. Okay. You know, I think we all are kind of on the same page here. I, I mean, I, I think that Penn State is – they're one of those teams that's just not quite over the hump yet. Uh, I, I just I have to go with Ohio State here. So I'm the only one taking the points. I yeah. mean, it's probably the smart – it's it's really – if I'm sitting here looking at it, and the pro line is 12 and a half, so it's the smart thing. But it, it I, 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 don't, I just can't do it. All right. Let's try out the ACC. Let's try this game on for size here. We got Pitt. There were some people – Talking to us in our little preview pod about Pitt. Where are you at? Pitt at North Carolina. You're giving up about three, three and a half points with the home favorite here. The Tar Heels are looking to extend their ACC Coastal lead with a victory over the defending champs. I said North Carolina and the Coastal. Blake, you a believer? Or is it just happens to be someone has to win that division? Uh... Man, I don't have a lot of really good things to say about the ACC currently at the moment. Uh, but no, I think I think UNC's they're they're pretty strong out there. Uh, they're putting up good numbers this year. ESPN says they got them down for a sixty-seven percent chance of winning this game against Pitt. Uh, they put in some pretty uh, pretty impressive offensive numbers. Not going to lie, uh, but talk about no defense. Huh. Good God Almighty! I mean, they yeah they 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 put up 500 yards of total offense or more, but they almost allow 500 yards of offense, which is kind of kind of scary. Whenever you sit here and you look at this, uh, playing a pit team that kind of prides itself on its defense, the Almighty ACC Coastal Division. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this UNC team's legit on offense. They rank in the top ten. I mean, like that's how good it is. But Pitt's defense, for what UNC does, Pitt's defense actually matches up. And Bradley, I just I assume since you picked UNC, it's probably how you're leaning. But let me give you something that I hope would sway you because I know you love to run the ball and you love defense. yes defense. So, so the big advantage for Pitt comes on the ground. Pitt is top forty in rushing. UNC is outside the top 110 in rushing defense. UNC last week gave up 297 yards on the ground to Duke. To Duke. Duke. Pitt's running back has five games with 129 yards or more and one for 320 yards, which shattered Tony Dorsett's 47-year-old school record. Give me Pitt and the you know, um, I've actually got Pitt here as well. I don't think I don't know that they'll win, but I think this is going to be a close enough game that that three points is just a little bit too much. For well, me. well, well. The trend continues. I'm the lone, lone wolf again. <laughs> just about in every game other than Georgia. <laughs> this is either really good or really bad. Good lord! So I've got. Uh, I think it's going to be a lower scoring college football game because of what Parker mentioned. A lot of uh, running the ball. I think North Carolina will. Play to the clock with the short passing game here. In the end, I just don't think that Pitt can match 
score for score with North Carolina. I think they can move the ball, run the ball, all that fun stuff. But when the buzzer sounds, it's going to be North Carolina 28-16 in the coverage for the Tar Heels. Okay. Best bet time where we can pick anything that we want in the college world. I'm going to go to Louisville, Kentucky, the number 10 college out of wake. My boy, Sam Hartman is leading the squad to number 10 in the nation and scoring at 41.4 points per game. Wake Forest in a shootout, 40 to 30. Give me wake minus three and a half. Yep, I am going to stick with the B1G here. Looking at the Rutgers-Minnesota game. Uh, you got Minnesota coming off a loss to Penn State. Uh, they actually got their ass kicked. A little red booty fact. Yeah, they got a little red booty and the fact that Rutgers does not match up very well <laughs> at all here in this game. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I, I, yeah, the um, the 14 points there for Minnesota, yeah, that's, that's easily going to be done. Gentlemen, for my best bet and my dog, I'm going against teams that, that I've that I've liked or, or, or getting on teams that I've uh, be, uh, picked against. My best bet is UCF to win. The, the the line now is even. You can get it just it's pick them. UCF to win. They're back in the state of Florida after making their one trip out and losing, like we said, to ECU. They're back in the bounce house, and since he struggles there, as does everyone, all time there since he's one and two, the only one that they won was when like 20,000 people were in the stands because of COVID. Uh, it just If you haven't sat down and watched the USC, UCF game at home, do it. It's incredible. They call it the bounce house for a reason. The stadium is literally shaking. So what is their line this week? It's even now. It's just oh, it – was, it was one and a half and moved to one, and I just looked, and you can get it right at – right no. at well, just stay with you. What do you, do you see as your dog this week? I mean, fellas, we're not supposed to win dogs, but I'm going to toot the horn if somebody's won five of these guys in a row. <laughs> <laughs> and I am going to disrespect mine and Blake's pick here. Missouri to outright beat South Carolina. Mm. Who is South Carolina beat? a and I was their quarterback. Kentucky with no mayo boy. And then a few cupcakes. Missouri, on the ha- other hand, could have probably should have beat Florida, Auburn, and Georgia. I'm just thinking South Carolina is overrated here. Absolutely. This was my underdog pick as well. I'm sitting here looking at this. I'm, you know, South Carolina coming off a big win against uh, A&M. Guess what? It's not, it's not uh, uh, a hangover effect. It's not um, – uh, or whatever you want to call it. What it is, is it's coming back to where you belong, and that is at the bottom, folks. Remember who you are. You're only South Carolina. I like Here that. We back Here we back. go again. I, I'm on my own again. <laughs> even, in the, even in the dogs, I'm going to continue to ride. I'm going to tail the same underdog that I won with last week. I'm going with Oklahoma State again. Number nine, Oklahoma State. The Wildcats' top two quarterbacks went out last week with injuries. Their third quarter, their, their third string quarterback came in. His only pass was picked off. <laughs> it spells bad news for Kansas State. They were up by 18 points at one game and still lost. Give me Oklahoma State 38 30. I'm just going to. I, 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 I little disagree with you on that one, but I want to give you, a, you. A, a point of why you said this. Who did Kansas State play last week? You remember? It was TCU. It was TCU. My handicap going into that game was TCU has knocked out the quarterback for four straight games. There's no way they could do it again. They got down to the third string quarterback. It's incredible. <laughs> it's absolutely incredible. Oh, good oh, Lord. Oh, gosh. Thank you for joining us with the college pick six. We're going to transition now. Absolutely. Before we do, oh. down there in the bottom there, tell us what you think about our Why picks. Not? What do you think about this Tennessee Florida game? Is it even going to be a game? No. Is Florida, are they broken? Are they done for the year? Or no. is, is Georgia going to fall off the wagon here? No. All these other games, <laughs> do they even mean a f- freaking thing? Sorry, I almost dropped the F bomb. Trying to do better. Trying to do better. Mm. Every day. <clears throat> you ready? Ready. NFL pick six.
Welcome to the NFL Pick 6. We start with our hometown Tennessee Titans. They're on the road this week. They're about a two and a half point favorite in Houston facing the Texans. My question to two-tone blue Parker, Tanny Hill or no Tanny Hill? Hey, I put a tweet out Monday. I think Tanny Hill's the backup in this game, and I believe Malik Ooh. is starting in this game. Uh, <laughs> there, there are people inside that building that as of yesterday did not know. I'm just telling you that they they did not uh, they did not elevate Logan Woodside. I, I just that's it. It just makes sense for this game. I mean, the Titans' offensive line with D- Daly out there is the worst offensive line. They literally should just put a wide receiver out there and just not even have a left tackle because he's pointless. Uh, it just a running quarterback would probably be better in this perfect situation and not exactly. get not get Tannehill killed before this insane stretch that we have coming up. Do you like the idea uh, of just I mean, pausing on Tannehill this week? I think this is a good spot to work Malik in, and you now have a good reason to. And like Parker said, it may end up looking like, hey, Malik does a lot better than Tannehill. Well, you know, Malik's faster than Tannehill. He can oh, run yeah. away from the defenders. Uh, so I think, this, I think Parker's spot on here. Uh, I think this is probably a – a uh, situation where Tannehill will be dressed. He will be ready to go if he needs to go. Uh, but I think that they may just say, hey, Malik, you need to be playing on being ready to start um, and run him with this. My answer is, does it matter? Because the Tennessee Titans have King, Derek, Henry, and 10 career games against the Texans. 1,035 yards, nine touchdowns. He had his career high against the Texans. 250 yards in the season finale in 2020. And Parker, the Texans are dead damn last in rushing defense in the NFL. Big Dave. Uh, uh, it, they should run the ball like 75% of the time. I'm not even joking. And not yeah. just not just his career. In his last three games, you know how many times Derrick Henry's rushed for under 200 yards? None. He's gone over 200 yards oh. every single time. In fact, He's only had two. He's had nothing. The worst game he had with two touchdowns. He's had three touchdowns in a couple of them. I, I just, it is so. Just give him the. Like I said a couple of weeks ago, just run the damn ball. Just give it to him over and over and over again. Yeah, this this just needs to be a pound the rock all day. Maybe dink and you know give your give your give your quarterback some nice easy dink and dunk play action passes. Maybe some little bootlegs Wait, to to Hooper. Or wait, is he uh, on the right. pitch thing tight end? I'm hey, sure. The, I'm sure Hollister swing. will be out there. He's every. He's out there every damn play. It's not it seems Hooper. like. I know. I know. I'm just telling you. Whoa, 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 Hooper Swain. won the game last week for the Titans. Yeah. Yeah. Swain's going to be out there. You every might as play. well Venmo me that money right now. Hooper won the game for the Titans last week. He it, needs to be out there every damn it, play. It I don't understand it. Incomplete. You're insane. To me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Insane. To me. But you know what? But there is some scary. It's, people are thinking this is a win. Like we oh. have lost this game. We lost That's this game cool. last year. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and Davis Mills is a different quarterback at home, and he's a different quarterback against the division. His last three divisional starts, he's got five touchdowns and zero interceptions for 105 rating. The problem is Nico Collins isn't going to play, and I don't think Brandon Cooks is going to play. I think he might even be on the Texans. That's a big out. That's oh, a big I mean, out. we don't. So he's been, he hasn't practiced all week. He practiced today. He's listed as questionable. Mm-hmm. He is swirling. Like, if you're going to trade this guy, you don't want to get him hurt, right? Because you're not going to win the play, go to the playoffs. You're not doing this no. stuff. Like, you're going to sit him down. Like, <laughs> like so that, that'll be the tell if he's going to be traded or not if he's playing. But I, there's, there's, there's a 50 50 shot at that. I think the Titans need to score early because the stats say the Titans in the fourth quarter have only scored w- once in one game in the fourth quarter this entire year. And that was last week when they punched in two field goals against the lowly Colts. The Titans ranked 31st against the pass. This could be scary in a backdoor coverage type scenario. But the line, we got some line value. It's not the full three. I think this is going to be a fast-paced game. We're going to have the featured of running back versus running back. Derrick Henry versus the rookie Damian Pierce out of Florida. 16 to 12. Give me the Titans. Y'all know I I talk about regression all the time, and the thing that scares me about this Titan team, right now they're getting the bounces. They're getting the calls. They're winning with defense. There is a metric out there that literally measures luck that adds all this stuff up. Right now the Titans are listed as the second luckiest team 
in the NFL. And the Texans are one of the most unlucky. It's the biggest gap using this metric this week. You tend to rise up if you're at the bottom. You tend to go down at the top. But as Bradley said, the one thing that Titans aren't lucky at, that's scoring in the fourth quarter. That has got to get back. But you know what? There's no way in hell that I am picking <laughs> the Houston Texans to, to beat this team. Give me the Titans. I took them as my eliminator pick in our confidence stuff. They're going to roll. Roll. Yeah, I've got the Titans here. That line has moved to the full three. Yeah. Well, I said 16-12. They covered the three. It doesn't matter. Well, we're going to go to jolly old London for our next game. The Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Denver Broncos. Both teams are two and five heading into this battle. Both teams are on four game losing streaks. Russell Wilson, he, he was he was on the plane, man. He was doing high knees, doing weights up and down the the to the flight from Denver to fucking London. <laughs> he is a he is an alien inside a human's body trying to pretend like he's a person. Hey. And so it wasn't just that. So this eight hour flight, four of the hours he was stretching in the aisles like a psychopath. And three of the other four hours, he was studying film, and he slept for one while everybody else was sleeping. The guy is literally a crazy person. Spells disaster in my book. He's going to be tired. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. These two I, teams, are. Th- this is such this is such a toss-up for me. It's ridiculous. I, look, well, I'll, I'll try to persuade you i'll let parker back it up here and just say i'll try to persuade you that the denver broncos are broken the denver broncos fan base they want heads to roll especially one head in particular nate hackett i don't know i don't know if he comes back from london parker man but the gm said he has confidence in them but like just for him having to come out even said that say that doesn't look good right I mean, they said the same thing about Urban, but I would argue Jacksonville's broken. I mean, they're both broken. What's the final score of this game going to be? Six to five? I, I have no oh, idea. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. I, I'll change your mind on that six score that you gave Jacksonville. Because I know you were picking Jacksonville on that six to five. I was giving Jacksonville a safety there with the five. <laughs> with the five. So you're way, way, way underselling how efficient this offense has been this year. Trevor Lawrence has nine touchdowns, four interceptions. The Jacksonville Jaguars team is number seven in yards, number 10 in yards per play, number 11 in the NFL in third down rate, number 12 in the NFL in touchdowns per game. Let's compare that to the Titans, shall we? 31 in yards per game, 31 in yards per play, 22 in third down efficiency, and number 20 in touchdowns per game. I don't want to hear. Okay, the well, let, offense is broken, but we can say no, the no, 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 no. Let me respond to all those stats. Let me respond. No, let me respond to those stats. Now, Parker, you, Parker, you throw those out there. He, he these can't are facts. let you respond to the facts. Facts. You're Just, right. They are. They are facts, and the that that's what's bad. The fact that this is that they have a top ten efficient offense, and they've won two games. That's, that's the problem. Bad. The facts the are since team. drafting Tr- Trevor, they can't finish. Since drafting Trevor Lawrence, the Jags are one in nineteen when the other score point other team scores twelve points in the last two minutes of the games this year. Three of them have ended in turnovers from Trevor Lawrence. The la- I mean, the story. Just look at it. Go to the Jags game against the Giants last week. The Jags got to the twenty. They got to the nine. They got to the five. They got to the one. They scored three points from all of those. Trevor Lawrence is seven and seventeen against the spread in his first twenty-four games. It's the worst in the history of the NFL since the merger. The Jags can win blowouts. Their two wins were by an average of twenty-six points, but they cannot win close games. Lawrence has never had a game-winning touchdown. Oh. That's spelling good news for my prediction this week because I'm wearing old Freddie T's number 28 jersey. The Jags win this one 28 to 13. That's Man, I'm points. Why did they trade? Man, I really thought they had a good one two punch with ETN and with Robinson. And what happened there, man? They got good value. So, what Six happened? Six round here? pick. Let me tell you what, what happened here. This Let's remind the people. James Robinson was an undrafted free agent. Uh, This was the last year of his undrafted free agent rookie deal. They had no intention to re-sign him, so they've turned an undrafted free agent into a 
sixth round pick that could be a fifth. Yeah, but doesn't because he's undrafted doesn't mean you get rid of him. Wes Welker was an undrafted free agent. I, just because they are undrafted free agents doesn't mean you move them. Travis Etienne. Hasty. Does that change their game plan? Snoop. Does that change no. it, the outcome of the Hasty, game? Hasty looked good. Yeah, they used him zero times last week, so the game plan's already changed. So they already they've, they've already moved on. They've, they've already moved on before they. Oh moved yeah, he was. You I knew he was traded in the middle of that game. I got you. Well, I'll go ahead and start us off here, so you ladies can battle it out. I've already said Jacksonville twenty eight thirteen. Give me the Jags. What just happened here? Shut up, ESPN. <laughs> Jaguars covered the minus two and a half. Easy. Man, I'm picking Jacksonville, but yeah. I don't. I don't have any confidence. The reality They're is, at their is, real home stadium I'm gonna, I'm, in London. No, I'm going to be honest with you. These are two shitty teams, and one of these teams is going to have a get right game against the other. I just don't know which one Duval. it is. I think that the kind of just from what I've been seeing, maybe Jacksonville might be yes. that one just slightly. I mean, but this this also could turn into one of those Thursday night football games we've been having here lately. Uh, where it's you know like Parker said a six to five game. Jacksonville's four and four in London, and Russell Wilson's undefeated in London. Give oh come a- on, he's played once there. <laughs> he's undefeated. Oh my god! Well, so ex- is Trevor. Now he's you can't want to know. You can't use his logic Trevor against Lawrence him. Want to know in London? Come on. Doug Peterson won. In uh, did he? With in, tw- in 2018, we actually, yeah, he did. And he said the Jags had an advantage because of how many times they played over there. Yeah, they do. So, but Jackson. he didn't win. That was that's kind of my point. Jags didn't uh, win. All right, I can't I cannot take either one of these teams giving up points. I don't care who it is. Whoever was getting points, give give me the points. Right? <laughs> I mean Denver it is. Like, like it doesn't matter. Denver Broncos. Yeah, that's literally it. If it was Jags, two points, give me the Jags. I, <sighs> That's probably the smart play, but I've already made my pick. Ugh. New York Giants going all the way out to Seattle. What a, another long flight for a team. How do the New York Giants keep doing this, man? I mean, they're doing it to seemingly everybody. They're road dogs again. Seattle's got the, I think, the the home minus three. Yeah. Is Geno, Geno Smith worth three points here? Let me, let me correct you. It's what? Gino. Gino. Just get it. Gino Smith. To <laughs> so. uh, man, I don't know how they keep doing it to answer your question because I, I don't I don't know if it's the coaching staff or what it is. I don't think they've been a, a super hard test yet. This is it. This is the game where I quit calling them fake if they go out there and win this. They're traveling cross country. I, I just I, I don't I don't believe in them. I really don't. Ooh. But God, we say that last week against the Jags uh, and they still won. Keep saying it, man. And, I mean, I'm on board with you. I, I think the same way. I don't really believe in them. They just kind of look like a bunch of ragtags hey, out there to me. I want to ask Parker something because we talked about trades with the Jags. The Giants traded away a wide receiver to the Chiefs. Do you have more information about that? Kadarius Tony. Yeah, they traded him for a third pretty much. I mean, why not? He wasn't playing. He wasn't. You know, and, and, Is he and, hurt? Was he disgruntled? Is he I think, I think it's a little bit of both. Like, yeah. So he's he's been injured. You know, I see him pop up on the injury status every day on my alerts, and I want to wish I could change it to like only alert me when he practices. I'm tired of getting <laughs> alerts every it. single day. I, I don't. I I think he was disgruntled, man. But that makes me think a lot about him because everybody in that organization seems to love the new coach and Brian Dayball. So you got to take a look at the the you know the your little inside there. So you're going to KC. He's either going to be amazing or an absolute bust there. He's not going to be anything in between. Um, but why not trade him? They're actually not using him. Like that that's the trade I'm thinking you make. There's a guy sitting on the bench that they're not using. You get a third round out of it. Yeah, sign me up. But hey, I took the Giants last week. And if you remember, a part of that was because of Daniel Jones on the road. It did it again. I brought that up last week. On the road against the spread. He is 13 and four. He just when I talk about the luck ratings, by the way, you go down that and I said the Titans are second. The only team luckier than the Titans are the Giants. Mm. And this has got to run out. They're outscoring teams 55 to 10 in the fourth quarter. This will stop. Their freaking tight end is out indefinitely with a broken eye socket. Wandell Robinson's the only guy that they've got. I, I just don't I don't understand how they keep winning. ESPN's driving me crazy. 
So our ESPN wants to advertise with DDS Sports Talk. That's what that is. <laughs> Tell them we, we thank you. I sock it. We got Wandell Robinson's the only wide receiver. What else were you going to say? I, I just don't. I, I just. I'm. Well, I'll say all that. To, I'm siding with Gino on this one. I just cannot take a, a cross country tour with the Giants. I cannot back that. Yeah, that's me too. I just with the big long trip across the country. You know, Gino. Gino's my man. Flying well, up hey, his radar, well, Met- Metcalf is out of this game. Yeah, he is. Forget about Metcalf. Well, no Br- Metcalf. You got yeah. Tyler Lockett. You got that Ty- Lockett. Yeah. Lockett. Tyler. Hey, you know yeah. who you can lean on? Oh, go ahead, Parker. Sorry. I was saying, and Lockett, that came, he's questionable. I mean, you he's going to be right here. Saquon. They have found a rookie stud at running back. Kenneth Walker the third. Yes, they have. This game is going to be delightful for me as I'm watching both of my running backs running wild all over Parker's fantasy ass in this game. I, I played three Saquon. players last night. They all got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Saquon Barkley, Kenneth Walker are going to trade a touchdown for touchdown. Walker doesn't catch the ball out of the backfield. Barkley will. Mm. Barkley, Barkley might take a pass and go 30 yards up the field here. I, I love taking the points, but it's a very dangerous situation here. With a cross country trip, I, I'm going. I can't pick the Giants to win, but I, I think it might be a little 19 to 16 game. Give me the Giants to cover. Wow. You know, it, it, um, this Magic. might be the most interesting game of the week. I, I really think so. Like both <laughs> these teams, we predicted both these teams to hardly win any games, and they're both leading their division. Mm, but then, then we have a treat, a little Sunday night treat. Yeah, we do. We get to go to Rowdy Buffalo. Aaron Rodgers takes his team. Are they broken? He thinks they are. He hates his team. He's, He's great, like, though. He's great. He's. Re- it's never his fault. Did you hear that? Yeah. Green Bay. Every, everybody Buffalo. Team, well, go ahead. No, no. I just I couldn't help myself when you were talking about rare. He's he's like he's praising he's everybody on my team sucks and needs to be benched. But coach said I was great. <laughs> Uh, I mean, between him and Brady this year, it's painful to watch these old some bitches play. Well, uh, you can throw yeah. Russ into that situation because yeah. that's who you're going to be watching live on ESPN Plus at 8.30 oh a.m. Central. ESPN yeah. Plus. Yeah, nobody's going to watch that. <laughs> nobody's watching that except for our sorry asses. Uh, but yeah, I, Green Bay's an anomaly this year. That's for sure. I don't know. And Buffalo is just a freaking juggernaut, it seems like. Oh, that's a lot of points, though. 11 points, Parker. It's Am I wrong? Biggest, it's 11. It, it's the biggest. It will be the biggest underdog of Aaron Rodgers' career. Um, wow. I, I mean, I don't I think eight was the closest to this. And this happened last year on the same weekend. The same weekend. Well, a year ago, they went up against the cards. Undefeated Packers underdog. Yes, who won straight up in that game? And let me try to convince you a little bit here, Blake. I actually like this matchup for the for the Packers. Packers are good against the pass and terrible against the run. The Bills pass and can't run. On the other side, if you look up the rushing yards per game metrics, Buffalo looks like they're good on the defense. Look, defensive line about stopping the run. Let me just tell you right now, they're not. They suck at it. They just they just get up by so many that the other team quits. They can't run the ball anymore. But if you look at rushing success rates, they're like one of the the, the 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 worst teams in the league at stopping that. So that being said, if the pack defense can slow down the passing attack and not go down 14 to nothing, they should be able to run against this team. I I, I just it's I, I just think that we're catching it's like a stock, right? We're getting Buffalo at the top and you're getting yeah. Packers at the absolute basement bottom. Yeah. Well, if you think they're at the basement this week, wait till next week after they get blown the hell out this week. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> they could give me Buffalo 31 to 17. They cover the Jeez. 11 point spread. I think uh, Green Bay is going to have to rely on Aaron Jones, Dylan catching out of the backfield. I think they'll try to establish the run early. Whenever this game gets to like a 21 10, then they're going to start to feel like catch up mode and go away from the running game, and that's when bad things happen. 
He's going to start pointing at the sideline, cussing at the coach, saying it's not my fault, coach. Yeah. Did you see that wide receiver run the wrong route? Could, could y'all imagine? Like, <laughs> you, you hear Taylor Lewan get drugged through the mud for podcasts, which he doesn't do during the regular season unless he's on IR. Could you imagine if he went on and was like, it's everybody else on this team sucks. It's not me. We would burn him to the ground. Oof. I mean, it's rare that I, going back to this game, it's rare that I give up double digit points in the NFL. I'll just usually take the points and I'm going to do the same thing here. Give me Mr. Blue of Water to cover this game and to potentially win it. Would you go, Buffalo? No, I did not. I actually was going Green Bay. So I'm the only one. The, again. 11, the, level, the 11 points bothers me, man. All right. I don't, I'm not saying they're going to win. I'm just saying that 11 points bothers you. Best bets where we can pick whatever we want because we said so. I, I'm going to I'm gonna come back to you, Parker, because you're prop Parker when it comes to the NFL picks. What did you see as your best bet? Bro? Man, I had a hard time finding a good one this, this week. I'm looking at Arizona and Minnesota, though. Uh, mm-hmm. Going with the, uh, the three and a half there for Minnesota, uh, I think that uh, – I think this is just an epic ass whipping of Kyler Murray. I would love to see it. Prop Parker, did you find a prop or do you want to do a game? No, I in fact I had my prop written down, but I didn't have the number because I didn't care what the number was. Oh, all right. It just said Derek the King Henry over. That's all it said. I don't care yeah, if it's 170. It's whatever you want. <laughs> whatever it is. It's really at a hundred, so it's the number. That's it. Um, it's at one hundred right now. What? If you wanted yeah. a game, that's um, Parker's lock right there. I mean, look at that. I mean, yeah, that that's it. And by the way, last week, week said what said Pickett would have had three interceptions. He had three interceptions. And I give you one. This is unofficial because I'm going Henry, but Zach Wilson under pressure is five for thirty one for forty yards this year. Oof. And the Patriots can bring pressure. And on top of that, Belichick doesn't like to lose. After a loss on the road. Bill Belichick for his career is 23 and three against the spread. So you would think the Pats would crush the Jets. Mac Zappy Jones, hour. Zappy, it's Mac Zappy Jones, hour, Zappy, 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 Mac Jones. I think it's Mac Jones. Uh, whatever. Give me number four. Uh, yep. I'm, I'm going to try Parker's best bet strategy here i'm going with a prop and i'm yes. and i am watching espn plus at 8 30 a.m <laughs> i am looking at the jacksonville jaguars tight end evan ingram over 30 and a half receiving yards in the last three games he's been targeted 23 times in the last three games he's had 69 yards 40 yards 67 yards he gets over 30 and a half give me some Dude. money Props are so much more fun. <laughs> Golly, he'll have like seven <laughs> yards. Oh, you can just, can just oh, take one, man. You just want one. It's over. Yes. Golly. All right, underdog time. Who did we identify that's not supposed to win? That may just rise up. Are you going to double dip and go Denver? Anyway. No, I'm I'm actually checking to make sure that mine didn't change because uh, I'm looking at the the Raiders and Saints game. Right now, they got uh, New Orleans. Uh, home dog. Yeah, home dog in here. And I don't think that's going to end up playing out that way. I'm going New Orleans over Vegas. Yeah, that's probably the smart one to do. But I'm going to be stupid. Go somewhere else in that division. Yes. And I'm going to back put my money on a quarterback that had one of the greatest quarterback performances of the year last oh, week. Oh, he's going Carolina. I can and see that it. is Mr. P.J. Walker. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> Beat Atlanta, Carolina. He Walker, don't get me wrong. He is one of the worst quarterbacks in the history of the league under pressure. But you know who the worst team is at getting pressure? That's the Falcons. And how Arthur Smith calls games, the Falcons can't beat anyone down. So even if Carolina's losing, they've got a chance to win this game. The Panthers' defense isn't great against the pass, but the Falcons throw it like 13 times a game. The crazy thing about this is if the Saints lose – this game will be for first in that division. Oh, talk about an interesting NFC <sighs> matchup. EJ, baby. But let's sound the fraudulent alar- alarm here. <laughs> fraudulent alert. Fraudulent alert. The Minnesota Vikings are fraudulent. Arizona Cardinals are going up to Minnesota. Kyler Murray's got his D hop back. 
Oh, God. Hop, skip, and a victory. Arizona wins in Minnesota this week. Really? It's going to be the one rare time that I completely agree with you. <laughs> the, the, the time to play some of these people, like Tomlin at home as a dog, Cliff Kingberry on the road as a dog is 15 and three against the spread for his career. And not only that, he has straight up won the last eight games on the road as an underdog. Jeez. Give me the ooh, ooh, ooh. give me the straight up. Give me the money line is what we like to Jeez. say on DraftKings. Give me the plus money. Golly. Man, this was a spicy one, guys. Of course, because it's it starts show. at the top. Trick or treat. It's someone's nightmare yeah, coming up in Yes, Knoxville. it is. Absolutely. Guys, thanks for joining us tonight. Appreciate you being here. Go ahead, and hit, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button down below. Give us a rumble on rumble. Follow us on all our social media accounts on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at DDS Sports Talk. And you can catch the audio versions on your favorite podcasting platform. Gentlemen, final thoughts. Baby hands pick it sucks. He threw three interceptions last week. He threw three interceptions. He's going to throw three interceptions this week. Philadelphia Eagles in the second quarter alone have outscored what the Pittsburgh Steelers have done all year in every game combined. <laughs> Out of nowhere. <laughs> Jeez. Parker's oh. bringing the heat tonight. Oh, my God. I say trick or treat, smell my feet. The Knoxville fans are going to give Kentucky a beat down. You go back to Kentucky with a loss. Goodbye. All I got to say is, is that this used to be the battle for the barrel, but the barrel still resides in Knoxville inside of the sports complex there at the football facilities. It's where it's, it belongs and it's where it will always stay from now until kingdom Kung. But as always, it's two tone blue all the way. You guys be well. Be well.